A machine screw is one of the simplest components to make. However, when we scale it down to the size of a watch screw, what was a simple component becomes much more complex. In this video, I machine a 0.6mm diameter screw for a watch. When machining things of this scale, we require much higher spindle speeds. This is one of the reasons why I'm doing this on a watchmaker's lathe, rather than a larger machine such as my Myford Super 7. All of the powered operations you see in this video are done at a spindle speed of between 2000 and 6000 RPM. I start with some 3mm diameter silver steel. The final diameter of the head of the screw will be roughly a millimetre, so the stock is much larger than required. But at this scale it's so trivial to machine down to diameter, I use whatever I have on hand. Of course, if I was making an M6 screw, or a screw that's 10 times this diameter, I certainly wouldn't be using 30mm bar. I am targeting a final diameter of a little under 0.6mm for a 0.6mm die. It is important to note, however, that there is some discrepancy between different sources on what this final diameter should be. The head is now ready to be brought to its final diameter. A chamfer on the end of the screw helps the die get started. The die itself is only 8mm in diameter. This means that I can hold it in a collet in the tailstock of the lathe. However, the die itself is very shallow, so whilst its concentricity might be constrained, its axiality not so much so. To solve this problem, it's a simple job to machine a spacer, in this case out of brass, to sit inside the collet that's slightly less than the diameter of the die, and this holds it axial as we tighten the collet down. Before starting to cut the thread, I apply a drop of cutting lubricant, in this case Rocol. Some watchmakers also use beeswax. At this scale it's very difficult to feel what's going on, so I mostly rely on sight through the watchmaker's loop. It's all too easy to shear off the screw. This can render the expensive die useless. The first few threads formed by the die can often be deformed, so I usually machine the screw too long and then cut it to length after forming the thread. Sometimes it takes a few attempts to get this right. I now face off the threaded portion of the screw to length. The screw is now ready for parting off. Losing small components seems to be an inevitability in watchmaking, and I've probably spent nearly as much time looking for lost components as I have making them. Magnets can certainly help in the search for a lost component. The screw is flipped round and put in a 0.6mm collet so the head can be faced to length. The screw is then held in a pin vise, or in this case one of the tailstock chucks for my lathe, so that the slot can be cut. One approach is to use a slitting saw, but here I am using a piercing saw and cutting the slot by hand. The finished screw is so small that it is difficult to recognise without magnification. To put this into the context of watchmaking, a skilled watchmaker will be able to make a screw half this diameter, and a typical balance staff is just 0.1mm. Normally, at this point, the screw is cleaned up, hardened and blued. I shall reserve this process for a future video. Thank you for watching.